あと一緒に入ってもらえないで、一緒に遊んでいたんだよ。BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Championships Saturday evening in Winterberg in Germany and we are ready for the final action in the Skeleton Worlds. In the yellow jacket on the right hand side former German coach Jens Muller watching the action along with the fans and in the booth alongside me in orange is Kimberly Boss. Kim, this team's competition, you must be dying for a young Dutch male athlete to come along so you can have a bit of fun with all the others. Yeah, I would have loved to join this competition, but unfortunately we don't have a man yet, but they're up and coming, so hopefully next year. Yeah, Dutch can't find a man. Well, it, it, you need that, but you know, this is, it's an entertaining, an entertaining deal. You get one female, one female and one male athlete per team, and it's, some, t some nations will have more than others, uh, there is a maximum number of teams you can enter depending on where your rankings are, but their total time together 
makes up the time for the team. And although everybody pretty much knows this track from their junior years, it is really hard to be fast here, isn't it? It's the, the, the most difficult thing about Winterberg. It's so subtle that you have to be so precise with your stairs to find the speed. Zero is one of the hardest corners to navigate clean and not hit the wall out, but then you get these big loopy corners with subtle pressures that you just have to drive so carefully. And it's very flat, like you have two is slightly uphill, we go into three, which is flat. Four is then slightly downhill again, but there's barely any gradient, so anything you do too much is this last time, unfortunately. Five drops a little bit down the hill uh, into six, and then you get the Chrysal, which slows you down again because it goes slightly uphill. Um, before you get to the fastest part of the track. Once we get out of Chrysal, we actually go downhill quite a bit and you pick up almost 30k until you get to the finish line. This is 9, the exit can be a bit tricky, the same comes for 11. You control it too much, you don't have any speed, you don't control it enough, you will hit before 12. And then you have the big right, like left-hander up the hill to go over the finish line. And we've seen some action there over that finish line because the track was fast and it looks fast today so hopefully they can navigate it well yeah it looks very fast today. look look at that look at that in the top of the picture it's sun it's yes. sunshine i mean it's uh, it's almost unheard of bleached out hills over there so yeah it is it is still fairly cold i mean it's hovering around zero maybe one degree maybe a little bit more but uh, the track should be quick now in training it was damp it was humid i mean on monday it was absolutely streaming with water like it was in the first day of the skeleton and World Championships. So this is going to be a challenge because the sliders haven't been on ice today and so they don't know really what it's going to be like. Now, there is a little technical delay at the start. So let's take a look at the Sam Moritz World Championships. You get an idea of this. It's a reaction time starter. So the lights go green and then when you have all five lights on you go so it changes your start as well you don't have your no normal kind of zone to be in you've got to be ready for a reaction start and that's going to make it pretty tough there you go there's the lights changing for christopher Grote here yeah I, I i've no experience myself like i said i've not done a team event but it looks very tricky to get that slap moving as fast uh, as you normally do because you have your normal routine and it just this is different you have to set up it's a standing still start <laughs> look at the germans <laughs> see if we can get such happy faces again from them today well we might do we might do blake Enzi's dad there in the uh in the jacket and uh there's a few bunches in, in the blue in the red jacket in the blue jacket matt weston his dad his mama there as well still loads of fans down in the chrysal it helps that it's not pouring with rain that's definitely a, a big bonus when you're coming to watch lots of canadian fans hallie clark's mum there in the black canada hat so lots of canadian fans making the journey over i spoke to her yesterday and she was just in floods and she was saying that, I mean, this is when I was going down to interview Hallie after the race. She's saying, I'm getting messages from Canada, it's already on the news. So, <laughs> Hallie Clark, there, 19 years old, comfortably the youngest ever world champion in skeleton and in bobsleigh. Come to that. There's Sammy Meyer, he'll be sliding for Austria with Julia Erlacher. But, uh, yeah, her mum was saying, Oh, it's, it's just so nice to be here. What a shame her dad missed this. <laughs> and I thought, Oh, no. And she said, Yeah, but somebody's got to stay at home and pay the bills. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah so unfortunately, he was we raced during the week. So, yeah. yeah. It, there's actually a lot of parents that came out for just this race because it's a Saturday. Yeah. It's just great to see. There's yeah. loads of fans. And it's a good event, I think. It is a good event, and the athletes really have fun because it's not just the pressure on you. And in fact, I don't, I don't any think anybody feels pressure. Going, of course you want to perform well. Of course you've got a teammate that you want to perform well with. And in Skeleton, you know, in Bobsleigh, where you started, you, you're one of two or one of four. Yeah. And so you've got that team element, but that slightly disappears in Skeleton because actually anybody else that's sliding for the Netherlands is a rival rather than... Than a teammate. Than a colleague, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it, it just got that nice little bit of, you know, bonding with, with other members of the team. And for some of them, they'll, they'll actually not be training partners either. So, uh, none of the Belgians, there are three Belgians, two male and one female, uh, two female and one male slider, they don't train with each other. They each train with a different nation or group of nations. So, yeah, it, it's uh, an interesting combination, interesting, interesting dynamic. 
looks like the athletes are warming up just like any other race. Though. Yeah. Look at the focus and of course, the of speed course. work that's going on. They all want to do their best for this race. Though. Well, there's two things going on. First of all, you're doing 130 k's at the bottom, head first. So you absolutely have to be as sharp as a knife. And secondly, if you don't warm up, you're going to pull a hamstring, or as you victory roll across the line, you're going to put your back out. So, actually, the, 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 the stretching, the flexing that everybody does is probably even more important than warming up the leg muscles because that's what allows you to relax on the sled. Yeah, warming up those muscles and the activating neck muscles, for example, is, is yeah, very important to our sport. Yeah, Ilko, our finish line cameraman down there. Everybody waiting for the start of the race. The yeah. atmosphere seems to be good. Well, there's two orange factors here, and, and <laughs> when isn't that the case in Dutch politics? But this orange factor, this is the actual Young Fan Club. You will see a lot of orange jackets as well, the, uh, the cover of the Netherlands. So you'll see a lot of those around. This is colloquially known as the Dutch Alps. Well, there's the lights. Seems to be working now. Yeah. When they go green, you may leave. If you leave within five hundreds of a second of it going green, that is judged as a jump start. Yep. So five or uh, five hundreds is legal. Under five hundreds of a second reaction time is not legal. That's interesting, that, because in uh, pro drag racing, they reckon three hundreds of a second is the maximum. That are here. But then they do that all the time. They react to lights all the time, whereas this is a very occasional <laughs> deal for the skeleton athlete. So it should become more frequent. I've heard they're going to organize more of these races well, I think lead so. up to the Olympics. They want to get it into the 2022, uh, 26 games. So absolutely right. Yes. Which I think is good. Yeah. More chances to get the sled. Uh, to, to get the sport in front of viewers and, and more chances for the athletes, you know, two medal chances, which you now have as a man or a woman in bobsleigh, you have two medal chances. In yep. skeleton, you only have one. So, yeah, to have uh, the opportunity of a team. I mean, let's, let's take a look at some of, uh, some of our competitors. Axel Jung for Germany, he's got three individual world championship medals, silvers and a bronze. But he's got four team golds, and in, in in every facet that we've had, yep. either in the mixed skeleton team or originally when we had a team competition with bobsleigh, uh, a two-man bob, a women's bob, then a male and a female slider. So it was a four-element race, and he's had gold medals in those. So he is the lucky charm. Who got the lucky charm this time? He I'm is sliding a jacket with today. Jacqueline. Whose fan club is also I, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hometown, well, so. Yeah, this is her hometown. They'll absolutely be out. Her and Hannah Neiser, this is their home track. Hannah Neiser, the Olympic champion, sliding with Olympic champion Christopher Grothe. So they'll be last off. And in fact, in the last team race, which was in Altenburg a week ago, as the weather deteriorated, uh, the team from the Czech Republic, who went off about fourth in the list, they led and then led and led and led and led and led and led. And eventually, the hometown heroes uh, Axel Jung and his teammate Susanna uh, Kreyer Susanna Kreyer got across the line in front. I, I interviewed him after. I said to Axel, "I didn't actually think that anyone was going to beat the Czechs," and he went, "No, I didn't either." <laughs> and it was it was close. We're not going to have that incredible runs. Yeah, we're not going to have that same situation here. The track has been holding its speed really well this afternoon, so it is going to be absolutely rocket fast now we probably won't get track records because the start is slightly abnormal there's christian bauder the uh, bundes trainer the head of the german training crew and they're having a good time of it so far as you would expect in winterberg where experience and ice miles count for everything yes they? yes the more runs the, the less you can steer basically yeah. and makes you go faster here well, he selected his strongest teams. You've got a pair of Olympic champions. Hard to argue with that. <laughs> a pair who know this track inside out since their, well, probably very early teenage years. Hard to argue with that as well. There's a couple of interesting combinations up and down the order. But uh, some nations just have one slider in each discipline. And so that's pretty much where they go. And the Spanish uh, are one of those. And the Torres Cavedo is their only uh, World Championship standard female slider, and Adrian Fernandez, their only male slider, and so, yeah, that's that's their team. Ellen Peltman's going with Colin Freeling for Belgium, so no Kim Marmans, 
Kim was in the silver medal position in the women's race yesterday, so she had a really good weekend. Actually quite nice for Aileen, one of the younger sliders to go with Colin, you know, two younger sliders, a little bit more world championship experience, not a bad thing at all. No, she was very happy with her individual championships, and she's very excited to slide today. I talked to her before the race because she's my teammate. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it will yeah. be her first time doing this start, so we'll see how that goes. Well, and, and that's all part of it, isn't it? You know, you, you learn something new every time you get on a sled, and, and this time you learn something new before you get on the sled. So there's that. Yes, uh, some have done it two, maybe three times. Um, yeah. I know Hannah did it for the first time last week in Altenburg, so this will be her second time. And the, today. the or there's two awkward things about it. First of all is instead of in your head, right, I'm ready to go, go, you go through your own routine and you will all have a routine, obviously. You go when you're told rather than when you decide. And the other thing is you can't move. No, you have to start from a standstill. Yeah. And a lot of athletes do a little bit of rocking Just, back. Yeah, and, and, and often they don't even realize that as they're rocking back and forwards, their hand is moving the sled a millimeter or two or even an inch or two. And that will be disqualification. If you move, yeah. then you will be disqualified. So the sensor on the sled that yeah. senses any kind of motion exactly backwards so. or forwards. And that's exactly so. And there, there is a little leeway built in because of nerves and, and breathing and everything else, but they will tighten that up as we get more and more of these races under our belts before we get to the Olympics. Um, and yeah, nobody wants to full start in the 100 meters final and nobody wants to full start in the team race either. No, you're not disqualified, which is what happened in a 100 meter final. You get a time penalty yeah. here, but still, if yeah. you get a time penalty, it's hard to win a race. Well, here's the start draw. First off, Spain and Belgium, followed by the second of our Swiss teams. Then the Czech Republic, who took silver last week. Boy, they must be looking forward to it. I don't think they expect a medal repeat, but they just enjoyed it. And actually, Anna Fernstedt could really do with a, a nice, fun finish to the weekend. That hasn't been that easy for her. The top three, well, Italy were on the podium in Samaritz. Great Britain were on the podium in Samaritz. In fact, Italy weren't, were they? They're outside there in the top four. And uh, Suzanne Crea and Christopher Groten here. They won the team race earlier this year yeah. in St. Moritz, though, so. Yeah. So, but the Italians had a, a bit of a shocker in both male and female races, so we'll have to see. Maybe they'll take that. revenge today. Yeah. All right. Anna Torres Cavedo will be the very first to go. Christopher Grothair will be the very last. And Amir and Bell well, leading this Spanish team. Of course, now he never really got to go in the team race. There was no female slider for much of his career. Maria Montecano and, uh, and a few others. I think they might have actually paired up a couple of times in world championships, but... Uh, they didn't have the bobsleighs at, back then. The team event was still with bobsleigh, yeah. and there was no Spanish bobsleigh Well, we did some mixed ones, didn't we? In Koenigsee, I can remember Alexander Gassner for Germany was the male skeleton yes. slider. Anna Fernstedt for the Czech Republic was the female. Was it Anna, uh, Andrea Greco? And from Romania, the, I think. Yeah. Yes, so it was, a, it was a, an IBSF international team. Yes, and, unfortunately, uh, they don't allow us for skeleton, because no. otherwise I, I, would, I would definitely join this race. But. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you could have uh, you could have picked. Looks like we're going to start soon. Anybody. Anna's taking her jacket off. Yeah. It's Look. not minus 20 outside, but when you're only wearing... It's like, life is basically like a glorified swimsuit. It's not that warm. No. It ain't summer yet. It's for speed. It's not for yeah. comfort, those suits. <laughs> yeah. They garrot you as soon as you try and do them up. You can see she's got that padding underneath the uh, chin strap in the helmet. And this is a track where you need that a lot because actually, you know, it, it's some of the, the bumps and bounces really whack your chin off the ice. Yes, it's been warm, unfortunately, so it's hard for the ice crew to take out all the bumps. They've been really working it throughout the weekend. It has gotten better, but unfortunately, it is a little bit uncomfortable for us as skeleton sliders so close to the ice. In the black jacket just by the start, you see Christoph Langen. This is one of his remits in the IBSF, is to oversee these team competitions with the start. We had a couple of very, very tight starts last week. Nobody actually had one penalty, I think there was. So here we go. World Championship mixed team event underway. There you go. There we go. We'll look for the reaction time. 1100 11, a second. That's really good. That's not bad at all. 
Looks anybody like she's navigating well so far. Yeah, anybody nice in zero. single digits is doing well. Oh, Ooh. big long skid down to one. You can just see that Anna doesn't have much experience yet, but she's gotten a lot better throughout the season. So it's great to see the Spanish team develop over the year. DJ adding to the action with a little bit of suitably Spanish music. <laughs> well, if you a nice, to... nice entrance here, so she's doing well so far. A little bit of last catch up. All right, nice into the Chrysler, trying to keep a nice smooth line. I wonder how much faster they're finding it today than yesterday. Look here we see the speed, 95 for Anna is a really good speed. Yeah. Now, fastest sleds at the bottom yesterday. We're doing 130, just edging up to 131. She's going to be quick here as well, isn't she? Yes. And but she what comes uh, across the line, 63.59. So you have to remember that the start times are much longer with this race. It's not yes. comparable to the times that were done yesterday. Now, for comparison, I, I will actually make a comparison. Where did she start in the women's race? I'm not finding it. Oh, yeah, she had... Her first heat was a 61.52, so a couple of seconds slower, but then she doesn't have that stuff. <laughs> was getting into it. Adrian Fernand uh, Rodriguez is her teammate. He's getting. He's going to have the same procedure. He's going to go down, say he's ready, and then the lights are going to start. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and a Miran Bell moving the sled. You don't want to let the sled frost on the ice. Now he's got to hold it absolutely still. That's why he's got both hands on it, ready to launch, but to make sure it doesn't move, doesn't flinch. Didn't look like quite as quick a reaction as it was in 17 hundredths of a second. But still below that point 0.2 mark, so pretty decent. Yeah. Also having some problems like Anna did out of zero. Picked it back up now. Slider and sled are so light. Zero is a big problem for skeleton that it's less of an issue for bobsled. Yes, we are very light and it's really hard to navigate those corners with hard steers because you'd skid. You see, you just go sideways or if you just control it enough, you hit the wall. Yeah. But he's picked it up. He's looking very comfortable on his sled. Has a nice line through Kreisel. You see the total time for the team on the right hand side. 97, so quite a bit up from where Anna was. And we'll see how that compares when we get some of our other teams on the ice. Here he comes to the finish and we'll have a first down time. Not too bad, a dismount from the final corner, 2.04.04. Okay, didn't get the individual time for that run. And our timing screen is showing us absolutely nothing. 60.95 run. Uh, four or five, I uh, think. Four or five, okay. Your, your writing is better than my eyes. Well, there again, you get that little audible tone as well as the lights changing. But it's, He's off quick. He has a good yeah. push start. If he works on his driving, they could get really get competitive over the years. Well, that all comes with time and experience. So for Belgium, Again, Ander with a sled because Belgians are Spanish training together, some of them at least. Alien Peltmans with Colin Freeling waiting in the wings. 1500s. 1500s, that's second, a pretty good. Yeah, second fastest reaction. It's interesting the way the athletes start. I noticed last week that Suzanne Crea started fully stretched out from the block. Her back leg stretched right back and like. I thought, okay, where's the spring coming from in the first step? It's a, it's a work in progress with everybody. I'm sure there'll be lots of people analyzing start techniques over the summer. Yes, I think we'll see like different ways to do this race compared to the individual race over time. Anna is, uh, Alina's up from Anna by quite a bit at yeah. this point. It's a ha second and a half and she's looking very clean. Nice smooth slide so far. A little early on to nine, but Seems to handle it nicely. Yeah, came out pretty clean. Mm -hmm. You miss 10 completely to get on to 11. And then out of 13 into 14, steep uphill. You go up here three stories more, more like four stories, 2.11 in front on that run. 
So she's already two seconds up, so only all Colin has to do is match Adrian's run. And they'll be still yeah. <laughs> in the lead. Well, because of the relative inexperience of a lot of sliders at this end of the field, we will say some, see some fairly large gaps. We have Craig Thompson Craig, here yeah. so, handling. Craig not sliding. Nope. His teammate. Which is a shame, actually, because uh, he and Brogan Crowley took a World Championship bronze medal last season in Samaritz. But then Marcus Wyatt didn't slide in that race. Marcus is in this one. Oh, a little over-rotation from Colin. He did that, actually, in his uh, fourth and final run in a men's competition Ooh, yesterday. Having some trouble yeah. going sideways as a zero. See if we can get it back in the control. He's looking good. Better speed than we saw from Ajem Fernandez, hence the top speed for him. And the gap's growing out to 1.99 seconds. A little late going into five, but looks relaxed on his sled. And the gap's already two seconds. Yeah. So he's starting to ease away from his Spanish counterpart. And sometimes you see that the female balance, one slider is much better than the other and the, the male balance swings the other way. You see sometimes gaps grow or shrink. It looks as though the Belgians are going to remain very firmly in the leaders' box. Your leaders at the bottom, Adrian Fernandez and Ana Torres Cavedo. They will leave the leaders' box and in <laughs> swapping positions. There you are. That was a, a little look behind the scenes there at what happens. The, the, uh, the leading team stand in front of one monitor and the competing team in front of the other one right next door. So Ellen Peltman's nice looking slide from her. She looks very relaxed on her sled. Yeah. Just lets it wave slightly into Kreisel, which is what you're supposed to do here. Yeah. And Colin Freeling as well, just a little away from straight ahead as he loaded, crosses the sled a little too far. Yeah, just over jumps it yeah. a little bit. And then your hip bone lands right on the saddle and you and then you're going down into zero going ow ow ow. It's good to see how happy they are. Yeah. It is a happy event. It genuinely is a fun event. You never see anybody looking glum. Nope. Well, a, apart from Kristen Groho and Hannah Neiser last week, because they really were disappointed not to be in the mix. But when you're an Olympic champion, you are, you know, and it's on a German track, you, you kind of are. OK, so for Switzerland, Julia Simpson and Livio Summermatter. Julia's mother was a skeleton slider in the World Cup. Her father, Alan Wicke, was a world champion in men's skeleton in the early days. And her grandfather, Jean Wicke, he was a bobsled world champion. So plenty of sliding experience in the family. And that was a decent reaction as well. Yeah, we've seen some good reactions time so far. Yeah. But First. already behind the yeah. Belgians at this point, it's probably the start difference. See how far Yulia can bring it back in the track. First time ever competing in the World Championships. Made her World Cup debut earlier this season. Cap's grown to a half second at this point. She's got good experience of the track, though. A couple of Europe Cup weekends and a couple of Junior Worlds as well in her early career. Still just 22, fourth best speed. Is she bringing it back? Not really. Ooh, really high, but just sneaks into 12. Taps right before 14. Yeah, gap continues to grow. It was a good run. Seven tenths. Good run from Aileen Peltmans. Very good run from Aileen. Is that going to earn her a waffle later? <laughs> it's nice that they're after the bobsaw race for one reason, is that the outrun is not as yeah. fast because the snow <laughs> is in there. Um, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to pick up your sled and walk. Exactly. She just didn't quite make it all the way to the yeah. finish. It might be that Livio has to wait a little bit for her to get out of the track. Yeah. All right, she got some good help there. Livio's getting re ready for his run. Yeah, Livio Sumamata, youth. Olympics bronze medalist in Samaritz in 2020, making his world championship debut like his teammate this season. Off he goes. Yeah. First also time he's ever done this. Looked like a good start. Point 13. Yeah. That's not a bad reaction. He's navigating zero well. Top speed so far, fastest of the men now. 
How much can they bring the margin back? It's already only 28 hundreds at this point. Mm. So he must have started quite a bit faster than Colin, but can he drive it as well as Colin did? Because he had a pretty clean run down the track. And this is the interesting element, isn't it? You see athlete versus athlete as well as team versus team. Mano a mano, he's got a slight advantage. How much of it he can bring back? Mm, tap before nine at my costume. They're, they're Second best speed. Staying about the two to three tenths away from the yeah. Belgians. They're closing the gap. Ooh, and it's going a little yeah. bit. I don't think they're going to make it. No. Nope. You can hear his the helmet just and his toes. Finn is just behind. And Belgium stays in the lead. So the Belgians will stay in the leader's box for yeah. the next team. But then we get our Czech team from last week. Yeah. <laughs> well, they will certainly be looking to have fun. Whether they move up far in the order is a secondary concern, I think. It's a high... High, oh, fully inverted, hanging upside down out of 11. Yeah, and here you see the individual differences because Livio actually had a faster run than Colin, but yeah. Julia's was much slower than Alina's. So. Yeah. All right, there you are, Team Switzerland. <laughs> team Switzerland two, in fact. We have another Swiss team. Now then, we have one team from Czechia. And this is Anna Fernstedt. And it's actually not just a national team, it's a family team, because Team Andranovsky is he, her cousin. And uh, Lelda Prejelena, the former Latvian slider, who's helping with their coaching, laying the sled on the ice for Anna. So again, goes. going with that spread sprinter starts, I do think that track sprint starts with one hand on the sled instead of on the, on the ice may be the way this develops. It looks like a lot of people are trying it out at the very least yeah. to get that sled moving as fast as possible. And for Anna, it seems to work. She was faster on the yeah. start than Alina was. And you're coming out of the blocks ago. like a sprinter. Yeah. And it's that, that front leg that's compressed that gives you that power. It'll be interesting ride. to see how Anna does, because Alina and Anna were super close in the individual race too. Right now it's 100, 100 so it's super close. Yeah. Really close. Seems to control Kreisel well, maybe a little bit too much, but she's back in the green. Well, she really grew up sliding in Koenigsee, but she was a member of the German team for a number of years, right up to World Cup and World Championship level, and so she knows this place inside out. She just didn't have a good time of it over the individual race, but this is a better run, and comes across the line a quarter of a second up. That now, is a nice run from Anna. Yeah, 61.24, fastest of our female sliders so far. And Timon Jarnowski, well, where would you rate him against Livio Sumamata, Colin Freeman, and Ajen Rodriguez? I'd probably put him a, a nose in front. I would too. Yeah. Belgium are the leaders. Here is Timon Jarnowski. When you see Timon in the change room, he's just always smiling. He's so happy to be on his sled. Yeah. He's copied he's really, Anna with the hand on the ice. He's really coiled up, isn't he? Yeah, there's definitely work in progress. That was a quick that reaction. That was quick getaway. Well, it wasn't. 2,900. It looked really quick, but he must have moved, yeah. but the sled maybe not. Yeah. Nice exit out of zero. Straight down the tubes into one, but only the fourth best velocity. He's struggling a little bit from one to two. Yeah. I don't know how much experience Timon has on this track. He's missing the entrance into five. He seems to be fighting it a little bit at this point. He's getting into Kreisel, yeah. fortunately. Well, they've gone from a quarter second up to a quarter second back at the moment. Yeah, Oof. a big hit before nine. It looks like the Belgians will stay in front of the Czech team, unfortunately, today. It does. It does. <laughs> I think Anna knows that the cars that are not going to fall their way here. Timon is having a wild ride today. Yes, he is. Across the line with a 60.85 slide. They're falling third place, so just yeah. behind the Switzerland two team. Yep. I don't think there's many sliders that say they have a wilder run in Winterberg than Altenberg, <laughs> but... He did. He did today. All right. 
while they're working on start technique. And anything you can do to earn a few hundreds in the start line is worth its weight in gold. Especially on this track. The start is so important yeah. in Winterberg. Yeah, that hard hit before nine really took out some speed on Timon's run, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Well, See, but still smiling. I know. Silver medalist last week. And not going to be in the top three here, I don't think. Not unless something very dramatic happens. Next up for Austria. This is the first of the Austrian teams. We have another one coming later in the field. And this is Julia Erlacher and Alexander Schlintner. Now, the way that their start numbers are organized is effectively you add up the points or the point standing of the sliders and the team with the fewest points in the IVSF rankings goes as the uh, last team, which means they are effectively the two best sliders in the field. Ely had a good reaction time, only 0 0.13 and a faster start than Alina. See if she can hold on to that advantage throughout the run. Don't think that was unfinished. That's dog barking there. Somebody else. <laughs> still Might have been Alina's pal. dog. Yeah. There's loads of dog around the track here this week. Yes, there are. In the green, all the way down so far for Yuli Erlaka. Staying about the same, but has a skid into Kreisel. 23 years old, first world champs for her, so a double chance to compete. Only 400s in it now. Wow. Going to be close with the Belgians. Alina put down a really nice run. Yeah. 100. in it. Ooh, this is going to be close to the line. Very close. Don't have the speed, and she comes across the line. 700s behind yeah. Alina. So now it's up to Alex Lindner to... Um, I think that was Alina saying, you owe me two waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, so Alex Linder has to slide faster than Colin Freeling to uh, take the lead here. Okay, well, I, I, I would say there might be a chance. First, let's, uh, the numbers I've got here. First heat for Colin, 58.69. Alexander Schlintner, 58.60. Now, that yeah. was just the first heat of the world. So but that's 900, and it's 700 at the moment. So. Well, do you know what? He could give away four or five hundreds of those on a slower start. Yes. So the reaction can have a big effect. Well, let's see what he does. Well, he was really poised there, wasn't he? You could see the backswing on the arm starting. Yeah, what was his reaction? Didn't actually get a reaction time. No, we're time, not so getting a reaction time. It must have been really fast. <laughs> All right. But he's already ahead yeah. of Colin at the start. But so in the green for now. He gave away speed all the way down the track in the men's competition. And there should not be too much Here between you see, them. He got a false start, so they got a uh, 0.75 penalty, unfortunately. Yeah, and that makes them behind the Belgians already. Yeah. That's hard. But, yeah. Can't be too fast because yeah. then you're out of the race. He does look like he's having a nice run, letting it run free and steering only where he needs to. Well, the timing system said that he actually went two tenths before the line, before yeah. the light. Then he must have moved somehow before yeah, yeah. he was actually... Maybe, well, maybe when the arm was on the backswing, he was moving the sled as well. 60.06 was the slide, and that's a good run down. That's a good run down, and they're still in second place yeah. at the moment, ahead of the second Swiss team, but the Belgians stay in the leader's box for now. Yeah. Here you can see how bouncy the ice is. You just yeah. see Yulia shaking on the sled. And here we should be able to see the false start. Yeah. Yes, he definitely moved yeah. before the right light side. turned green. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alex, we saw it wasn't green. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we've had Yulia Simpson and Livio Sumamata for Switzerland. They currently lie in third. Now they're teammates. Sarah Schmidt and Vincent Booth. And again, I would say in terms of actual performance, they're a little ahead of Simpson and Summer Matter. 
Are they going to be able to beat the Belgians? Well, Sarah has a good yeah, getaway, a nice really reaction good. time. And at the start, she's already a quarter second ahead of Alina at this point. Yeah, Alina was 1,500 reaction time, so three tenths of that just from when you move. Or three hundreds, rather. Yeah, she's building on that lead mm -hmm. from the start at this point. Let's see if she can keep that going. But so far, the run is looking very nice and clean. Second Worlds for her. She competed in this in Samaritz as well Ooh, in the team. Who has skid into Kreisel, though. Good last memories of this track before coming here. She got S S silver in the Junior Worlds last February. That was her last outing here. Ooh, very lots, late into 11. Yeah, lots of kicking away there going Staring on. Staring very hard to stay online only 700s wow. this might be close at the line super close at the line we're not getting speeds but oh 500 all right the game is on isn't it, it 61 is. 5 3. but if we know one thing of vincent's buff is that he can drive a sled very yeah. well he can glide can't he mm -hmm. he can really glide so that's this, what you need here this oh, look. she's very excited <laughs> with that very excited <laughs> Yep. Maybe that was the 1200s reaction time. <laughs> Normally the coach tells you your, your start time. Well, and that's what it is. Yes. Your reaction time basically defines your start time. Yes, because you could have a great start time, but if you're too slow when you get away, then... Or too fast. <laughs> <laughs> then it's not worth anything, that's no. true. All right. This could be. Oh, oh, I think that was an early start I think as that well. was an early start too. Yeah, we're not getting a reaction time and that's a good indication. Yeah, yeah. it is a full start. He started a good Six, half second before. Ten before. <laughs> Lights have barely gone, started going red. Yeah, right, they already well. have a penalty of more than a second at this point. Oh, so. that's such a shame. Yeah, this is the thing that this we can't practice this very often, and unfortunately, mm. he got too excited and moved and then just decided to go, which I think is the right thing to do yeah. in this case. But yeah. The penalty for, for jump start is far greater than you would yeah. gain from being even two tenths faster. It's three quarters of a second plus whatever yeah. act, like time in front of the start time you started. Exactly so. so. Yeah, he has the best speed of everybody at the moment, but mm. it doesn't help him. There's going to be too much <laughs> difference. He's brought it back to. Yeah. The Belgians are hanging on. That's such a shame for Vincent's proof. But again, this is this is the, the slight lottery of this race, particularly with the lesser experienced teams. Is And, it, and he oh, can't believe it. Yes. But, you know, this is a little bit what happened in Altenburg last week. <laughs> yes, they know it. And he can see Sarah just oh, being supportive but he knows of his he teammate. Had a, oh, he knows he had a good run. <laughs> yeah. I would be angry if Vincent, yeah. I understand. I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's tough. But it's gonna people gotta practice this and it's gonna get better. And I yeah. think this is just inexperience and very unfortunate for him. But hopefully sure. he'll come back next year at the team event and show how he, he should do it because he clearly gets away before the light turns green. Yeah. He's a half step. In. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he is. Ah, it was a good slide as well. And, you know, you can't take that out of it. It was a very nice run. OK, now for Chain Canada, first of our two teams, Jane Channel and Blake Enzi. Both of them, of course, competed in the individual race. You must be entered for the individual race to race in the team competition. I think that rule might have to change. I think it might need to have to change to, you must race in the team race. Because Canada have tried to pull a fast one. We got another false start uh, because he had a faster reaction time than the point four, point zero four, five. Yeah, point zero 0.04, and you're only allowed to be point zero 0.05. But even with that, she's still in the green over Alina because Jane yeah. Starr is just so, so fast. fast. Well, they haven't applied the penalty yet. It's a 0.59 penalty plus 400, so it's 0.63. Jane is having a good slide so far. She looks very calm on the sled, so yeah. hopefully she can make up some of that penalty that she's just picked up. Now, from. she won't know about that, and even if she did, you've got to focus on getting down this track safely at these sorts of speeds. She might know because it flashes red when you do a false start. Yeah. But... I don't know if you would see that or in not. In your periphery. It depends how far you've gone by then. Mm -hmm. and whether you're worrying about a broom hitting you on the head. <laughs> More Jane Channel. <laughs> uh, 
stories yeah. in, in skeleton than almost yeah. anybody else. Whoa! Comes across break. the line, 61-23. So compared to Alina's time, she is faster yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, by 2,500s faster, but unfortunately the penalty is 6,300s. And that means Blake Enzi with a lot of work to do. Yes. And better not try getting on with it in anticipation of the lights. Ready? Yeah, we're starting to get to the stage where actually just being dead certain and hearing the audible before you flinch is is the safe way and still his reaction time was very acceptable point one that's a very quick reaction time and he's a second ahead of the belgian team at this point because his part pushes are so much faster than yeah. colin's pushes yeah but that was the case very much in the men's individual competition he could not hold his speed down the track and whether he's found a little bit more inside himself today or not remains to be seen. Two tenths up, so he's building that advantage. Lewis goes late into eight, he's gonna just miss the wall into nine, sneaks through. Now, it does look like we're seeing a revision of the start time for Jane Channel without a penalty. We'll wait and see, because it's now gone from 0 0.04 to a 0.18 reaction time. 8,400's up, 60.54, fastest run, and a bit of a scorpion roll off the line. They go in the lead, so our Belgian mm, team has to leave do. the leader's box. So Jane Channel, the timing was reassessed, 1800s the reaction time. So she did not have a false start. No. Which is nice. Looks not. 61.23 downtime and 60.54 for Blake Enzi. One, on one of the, those athletic starts that we saw earlier with yep. two, one end on the ice, one on yep. the sled. I think everybody's had a bit of a think about it after Altenburg. And I mean, apart from anything else, you know, you've got that brace which stops you moving the sled with a loose hand so yeah i, I mean that alone makes it worth doing so Thank canada you. lead now then hallie clark 19 year old youngest ever world champion in with ryan coon ryan was entered for and trained for the men's race but then the coach decided to pull him out so that they could somehow get a better start draw so his only competitive run will be trying to back up the world champion. I think Ali's they're setting him up. point two one, so yeah. it isn't the best of the field. But, but it was safe. She knows how to slide. She has four tenths to make up on her teammate, Jane Channel. Yeah. Well, she was in magnificent form, wasn't she, in the women's competition? And she's looking like it right now. She's yeah. looking calm on the sled and driving some nice lines at the top of the track. But yawning chasm half a second behind jane channel yeah and that's just from the start because yep. the gap hasn't grown but it's also not getting smaller well, it's getting a fraction smaller at the chrysal four tenths back she made so much speed at the bottom of the track that she could actually be in a german slider she's got a tenth back fifth best speed nice entrance into 11 see how much speed she can get at the bottom of the track is she gonna catch her Ooh, two tenths, Ooh. it's going to be close. It is going to be close. I don't think there is two tenths at the bottom. There might be 50. Ooh, oh, they're wide. Wow, Helly. What? Lord. There's her mom in the black hat. So much speed at the bottom of the Oh, track. wow. And she did that all the way through the women's competition. That's insane. Well, that's Tina Herman's speed at the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, that's impressive. She knows how to get from the bottom of 14 to that finish line so fast. Well, Ryan, three or four heats fewer on the track this week than anybody else in the competition. Not quite sure what the logic was, but he is coming in at a real knowledge deficit in his first world championship slide. Didn't do the men's race, was pulled out at the last minute. So far, he's off to a good start. Yeah. He's 1900 faster. Good reaction time. At this point, then the other team was. Yeah. See what he can do in the track. 
Well, Blake Enzi has now had five trips more down than Ryan has. Who's going late into four and gonna go late into five, which is gonna be down on speed by Still Blake, Still in the green, but by nine hundreds. Really high at the start of Christ, just letting it go. Whoa, and again, he's got no experience. Training on Sunday and Monday was very wet and very slow and nothing like this. No, he's going a lot faster than he has gone in training and you can just see it's getting a little out of control. Yeah, so, I mean, poor guy, what was the point in not letting him race and feel the track and just throwing him into this with no racing experience of this track? I don't know. 61 dead behind the other Canadian team. They're still in second place so in front of the Belgians, yeah. but probably not what Ryan and what no. him and Halley hoped for from this race. And, and you know what? I, I, why would you deny him three runs in the race? I mean, minimum of three. He might have got into the second heat and got four. Yeah, I don't know. No, me neither. Well, it is still Canada one that leads. Jane Channel and Blake Enzi ahead of Halley Clark and Ryan Kuhn. You see Hallie's start. Yeah. Well, she was conservative or safe, depending on how you prefer to, to call that. And Ryan, yeah, came onto Kreisel with the sort of steers that he'd be doing in the wet and woof, up to the roof. He was so high compared yeah. to Hallie, who was much in control. He yeah. was much out of control at the bottom part of the track, unfortunately. Yeah. Good experience for him. Hope to see him back next absolutely. year. Absolutely, absolutely. Now then, for China, this is the China 2 team, Li Yuxi and Yan Weng Gang. They're not doing the athletic start. She starts the exact same as she does in the race. It has a bit trouble getting away. Her reaction time is good, but it looked like it wasn't actually moving forward the sled. Yeah. See what her push time is. She's already half second behind on the Another one team. So was Halley, but Halley won the race yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yushi didn't, so it's going to be a tough time beating that time of Jane Channel. 5800s back. Jane looked like she had a really nice run. This is not looking untidy, but she doesn't have the acceleration at the start. And all you can do on the rest of the track basically is throw speed away. Yeah, she's looking good. She's driving nice lines. Yeah. Oof. Just didn't sneak through there. So be a bit down on speed. Yeah. Only seven best speed coming out of nine. Comes on to 11 wrong, comes on to 13. Working really Lops hard off. through those last couple yeah. corners. They're going to be a half second behind the Canadian oh. team. So much speed in those corners. Just can't let it fly sometimes. 6107, so only 700 slower than the last slide of Ryan Kuhn. But uh, Jane Chan, 6107, is that right? Yeah. Yes. And oh, James was a 6123 with the penalty. Okay. That's yes, why it she had a 60, 60, 40, 64 without the yeah. penalty, which is the fastest time because Haley did the exact same time yeah. in the women's right now. But now we have Yun Wen Gang up. He can put down a good run, so yep. we'll see how far he can bring down the gap. Okay, I have a fun fact coming up for you. I must try and remember to say it. Well, away goes Yang Wen Gang. Push world champion, should have a decent getaway. About the same though, yeah. surprisingly, as Blake had. Well, a 0.2 reaction time as it's well. Very slow compared to yeah, that's Blake's a tenth. reaction time, which is a tenth already. Before you start moving, so yeah, and, and again, you're not moving in your normal manner off the block. And, yeah. and that you know, that explosion of the first step is so much of what builds your speed. You're just a 10 behind the whole way down that yeah. push and down the track for that matter. He is sliding well, though. The yeah. gap is getting smaller. Yes, it is. And at this point, it, he's 500s ahead. He yeah. found some speed through Kreisel. Yes, he has. Well, their coach, clean. their coach had their sleds set up beautifully in the men's race, particularly they really found speed. And across the line, 4,200s up, 60.12. That's a really good run. 
Jason's downtime is a 59.05. 59 yeah. And then the team time is 2 minutes and 1,200. Yeah. Half second over the Canadian. So that was a good team performance from the Chinese team. Yeah. Unfortunately, hit that wall but just before nine, but then Jan came out and put down a really good run. Yes, he did. Dirk Machens was very impressed with his team's performance in the men and women's competitions. And I think they might have some good results here as well. And again, look, enjoying the experience. That's what it's all about. Of course, when there are Olympic medals at, at stake, maybe the enjoyment is going to be just a little more below the surface. Next up for Italy, Lesia Kripa and Mattia Gaspari. All the three Italian women had a pretty tough time of it in the individual race, and the men did too. Mattia Gaspari was hovering around the top ten. Alessia had a very bruising couple of days on ice. 100th yeah, up at the start of a 0.20 reaction. So far looking very calm and relaxed in her sled, building on that 100 she had at the start. And just driving really nice lines here. Right, level, and now just slipping behind the Chinese team by three hundredths of a second. Working a bit hard to the 5-6 transition and it just loses time. It does look like they've got a little bit of a faster setup on their Schneider sleds, but only 12th best speed at the bottom. She's missing the speed. Yeah. She's clean, but she has no speed with it, unfortunately. She's going to fall back a little bit more, I would expect, to the Chinese team. Oh! There's the first shoulder roll yeah. out of 14. We saw a couple of those from her in the race the over the last couple of days. Back. 61.23 compared to Liu Xi's 61.07. So both of them are slower than Hallie and Jane were. Yeah. But they have the, Chin the Chinese team with a very strong second heat down. Yeah. Let's see what Mattia can do. He's going to be doing well to stay with Yang Wen Gang. First sub 50 run in a long while. Livio Sumamata did a 59-59 and a 59-05 for Jan. Looked like a good reaction time of Mattia. Yeah. 1400. 1400s, all right. A little better than Alessia. And at this point, only 1300s behind. So he made up some time already on the push compared to the Chinese team. Already has a World Championship team bronze medal with Valentina Margaglio from Altenburg 2020. That was the first World Championships for this format. Jane Channel and Dave Kresh Cheshin of Canada took the silver behind Jacqueline Lerling and Alexander Gassner, who's here coaching this weekend. I don't think the Italians will take in a medal today. I think it's unlikely, I have to say. Unfortunately, he's losing time all the way around up, down the track. You're really half second behind the Chinese team. Of course, that was without the reaction start. Oh, Alessia. Uh, I think it might be a little bit late to pray. <laughs> half a second back. The gap's growing at the line. It's nearly six tenths. So that individual run of 59.47, so he's in the 59s. Still the second fastest yeah. time of the men's today. Not quite enough. Ah, there you go. <laughs> They're having a good time. Yes, they are. I have to say, after the individual races, probably their expectations, both this and the other Italian pair, weren't exactly sky high. And it's also hard to have expectations because you're going to do a start that you've never mm. done before. Yeah. So it's always a kind of see how it goes. Learn from every race at this point. They do like playing to the crowd. Now then, Mystic Row and Austin Florian for the USA. The fastest starter in the women's field. Push world champion Mystic Row in her first world champs. She, she goes through that athletic start as well. She puts her hand on the ice. Yep. 
she is a really explosive starter. And again, look, no big stretch. She's got her foot on the block. If you are track and field sprinter, this is kind of where you really come into your own because they're making you start like track and field. Reaction time was only 0.14, not the fastest. No, but she has two tenths out of the blocks, but hits the wall behind after zero. Yeah. She's three tenths up at this point because her push time is so much faster. Now. She's very skiddy. Wait. She looks a little out of control and skidding. Well, I, I, it's it's kind of the Bromley thing, isn't it? Let it fly. Don't try and overthink it. You still want to keep your runners straight. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Christian never bothered well. too much about that. 12 best speed, 3,800s up. She is racing away from Li Yu Shi. And only now is all of the skidding starting to catch up with her. She'll be three tenths ahead of the line. That's a great run, 60.70. Well, she does start strongly. Of that, there is definitely no arguing. But yes. uh, yeah, the, the, the phrase that pays, let it fly, she was doing that. Definitely in Winterberg pays off. Yeah. Less is more here and well, that's... And on cold, see. hard ice, you get away a little bit with the skis. Yes, now then. you couldn't have done this on the first day of racing no. with the wet. Fun fact, Austin Florian is red, green, color blind. So he so can he, only go on the sound. Well, except he can see the lights. Mm -hmm, but if yeah. they're all red, you don't see them turn yeah. green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes on the sound, that's exactly right. Still has a very fast Yeah, anyway. 0.15, that's very good. And again, hasn't he been starting fast in the last few weeks? You can see it, the gap's almost a second. Wow. And if you can put down a nice run, that gap will only grow. Fastest start in a men's competition so far, including the uh, start 7.63. He's driving some nice lines. Yeah. And when you've got the speed, you get a little bit more G-force pushing you into the corner. You get that tiny extra bit of control. Yeah, we'll see his speed here coming into nine. Second best speed only, so he's a little bit down on Yen's speed. Well, if Mystique Row was loosey-goosey, he is absolutely the opposite. Keeping he's it in nice control. and controlled. Still seven tenths up. They should take the lead here. Yeah, no 5700s. That's a good run. 58.85. We've broken the two minute barrier. Yeah. 159.55 for the American team. So good stuff from Team USA. They have the lead. And also we look are. very happy with it. Yeah. Well, first run on day one, he was absolutely ready to pack up and go home. By the end of the competition, he was a very much happier bunny. And do you know what? I know we've got a lot of teams left. They might be in the leaders box for a little bit. They just might. Well, it depends. We have Marcus Wyatt come up in the next I know, team. I know. I mean, I'm Molly Coltman, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at it, and we have got a lot of really good teams. We're 11 teams in. We've got 18 in the competition. And the Americans, or any of the next seven, could be in the medals. It is that sort of a race. It's going to so, be very close. Yeah, Amelia Coltman, first ever world champs, and she's in the team competition as well. So great opportunity for her. She had a really, really good couple of days in the women's competition. I think way above any expectations she might have had of herself. There we go. Not the fastest reaction time, but certainly safe. 1300s. Yeah, she's, she didn't do the athletic start. She did the classic start. Yeah. You see the difference with Mystique is 2600s. Yep. Well, Mystique out starts her properly by uh, getting on for 1500s on any other day anyway. Is if anybody had good speeds at the bottom, though, in a women's race, it was Amelia. So yeah. we'll see what she can do down the track. She's putting some very nice lines together. It looks relaxed on her sled. And the well, grab is staying the same, so she's not losing any ground anymore on Mystique. First heat of the women's race, Mystique started 5.22, Amelia 5.41. And Amelia came down a tenth ahead of Mystique Row, having started two tenths slower, so. She might as well now, she's closing the cap fast. Yeah. 
I mean, she could be wearing Only a German. Nine hundred. A little early She could on be the wearing 14, a German jacket, wavy. couldn't she? Oh, six hundred back. That's a great run. In theory, Marcus should take the lead then because he did the track record yesterday. Yes, he? he did. Oh, I'd forgotten that. <laughs> Good knowledge. You see, the women's times are very close, though, as well as in the, the women's race. This is 600 to Mystique, but mm. also Hallie's and Jane's times were within the same tent at yep. this time. All right, Marcus Wyatt then. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, track record holder. Finished in the top five in the men's competition with a brand new track record. So he's his arm out in front, which is different than normal. Yeah. Away we go. That looked like a decent reaction, 0.14. Very decent. 1400s behind, so a little bit right. slower than Austin on the start. Second so. fastest though, not too far back. So the team are 800s back at this stage. Now let's see if he's got an, another track record race run in him. Don't actually have records for the individuals or the teams. Gap stays 800, so he's matching Austin yeah. Florian at this point. Blow for blow. Let's see how his speed is coming out of eight here. And he's tied for the lead, second, second best speed. He's brought it down from eight to six to four to two. How close is he going to be? Amelia's cheering him on. He's in the lead. This is going to be close. Inside 58, 85. He is by 900. <laughs> All right, they lead with what? Six to go. Six to go. That's the first 58 we've seen as well on the men's downtime. Yep. All right, good stuff from Marcus Wyatt. Amelia cheering on her teammate. Yeah. Oh, very high. Oh, very late exit of 13 there. And yet, somehow she made speed. Yeah, 13, 14 were shrekless, as I would say here. But then Marcus came down, just looks relaxed and calm and in yeah. control the whole run down the track. A few random marks, by the way, from crashed bobsleds earlier on. Yeah, they'll definitely feel those on the way down. Yeah, like crossing the train tracks. Janine Flock and Sammy Meyer now for Austria. Our sixth seeded team. Away she goes. Very, Fast very sharp reactions. Down. My goodness, she was ready for that. 200 faster. Yeah. Wow. Then Amelia. Again, she had a very off form world championship. This is her 12th world championships. Couldn't tell you how many team races she's been in. She had silver in Innsbruck in 2016 in the team's race. Gap to Amelia is growing slowly, though, already 1500s behind. Yeah. And Janine has done a few world championships. Her first was Altenburg in 2008. Wow, that is before I even started sliding. I was going to say, how old were you then? Yeah, still in school. <laughs> yes. Well, she was barely out of school, in fairness, so nice looking run but where was the speed well it was a a 60.95 that's not and it's an enormously fast run i'm afraid it's going to be a challenge for semi to make up that difference to the yeah, british team he's got to be two tenths quicker than marcus wyatt which on any day is not easy all right lots of support at the top for sammy meyer of austria World champion Andy Schmidt with the sled. Oh, you can't move it anymore, Sammy. He moved it there before the light started, and that's good. But away he goes. Look good. What's the RT? 1500s. That is a decent getaway. Yep. But already a half second because he just doesn't push as fast as Marcus does. He 
He's a good glider. He looks and very nice in the swim. Yeah, he does. does he? And every run, he made speed down in the lower part of the track. But he can't afford to be half a second back coming out of the Chrysler, and he's going to be, isn't he? Yeah, it's seven oh. tenths at this point. It's a lot. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the big V8 power that Marcus Wyatt brings to the line. You, when you get that acceleration early on, it takes a long time of better driving to catch it up eight tenths back. Especially in Winterberg, where it only really starts going downhill in corner five. Yeah. There's the Brits in the leader's box. Janine's questioning which way this is going to go. I don't think there's too much of a question. Across the line, Sammy Mahaya, whoa, wild. 59.43. The Anubin fourth place behind the team of the US and the Chinese as well. Yeah. So Great Britain, USA, and the People's Republic of China are the top three at the moment. We still have two German teams, one Chinese team, one Italian team, and one British team to go. Tunin really pumping that arm like a track athlete. There is definitely going to be a lot of track coach action being found over the summer to try and uh, really boost those starts. Get away as fast as possible. Mm. I think there's definitely a technique to be found to gain yeah. some extra hundreds at the start with this race. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, they're downcast, aren't they? No, they've, had, they've had a good race. Yeah, and they're done now for a while, so. There you go. Yeah, straight off to training in Lake Placid. Next up, Jackie Pfeiffer, Axel Jung. Now, is Axel the magic charm here? Four team gold medals. Olympic silver medalist as well. Two world championship silvers since his debut in Lake Placid back in 2012. It gives a false start because she started oh. at 0. 0.03. Wow. Yeah, 0 0.03, Jackie Pfeiffer. Unfortunately, that is going to be a tough one because they're already a bit behind on the start on this track. First ever mixed team world champion, Jackie Pfeiffer with Alexander Gassner back in Altenburg 2020. Now, again, we did see Jane Channel's time checked and reassessed. So I'm not going to absolutely... The Reaction time is 0.2 of a second, so there is no penalty. Which right now puts them in the lead. Yeah, by 1600s. She has one of the best speeds and nine, and it's including the men, so she's putting together a really nice run. Yeah. This could be a real shot for the medals. They've got a really strong chance, Jackie Pfeiffer and Axel Jung on home ice, 3200s up. A that 60.44. That is two tenths faster than any of the women's times we've seen so far, and then the mm -mm. Jung still has to come. Yeah. And she was cautious. 0.2 start. She's happy with that. <laughs> yeah, she saw the red at the, the top, she said, yeah. but yeah. luckily it was a false, false start. Axel Jung. Uh, this, uh, they definitely have a great shot at the medals here. They might be hanging out in the leader's box for a while. I'm discounting Italy. I think I'm discounting China as well, potentially. Well, that didn't look like a bad start either. No, six hundred. Wow. Jung is going for it. Yes, he is. Seven hundreds up still, and we know he can drive down the track. Now, he's not won in this format of mixed team skeleton. All his previous team encounters, he was a quarter of the runs. Seven hundreds up. He's putting together a nice run. Well, the time he's got to beat is Marcus Wyatt's 58.70 and... He's slowly building a the lead more. out. So. Yeah. 2200s up, 800s up, second best speed. It's coming down now. It's going to be close. He needs to do what the Germans do, which is build speed in 13 and 14. There he goes, 1100s. 
Should be 2500s in the line. Almost 131 at the bottom. Yo, 1500s. All right, so they lead. A 58-8-7 slide. Marcus had a 58-7-0. And there's the bonus of Jacka over Amelia Coltman. That was a bigger advantage than Marcus Wyatt's advantage over Axel Jung. So it is the German team that moves into the lead. It's very close. It's interesting to see what these other teams can do and how yeah. tight it will be at the top. And there's only 20, uh, 1,500s first to second, 2,400s first to third. So, I mean, in an individual race, that's a big margin to drop. But over two sliders, that's only 1,200s each. That's, you could, you could drop three spots here without too much trouble. Now then, what about Xiao Dan, uh, younger of the Chinese athletes? She's 21 years of age, second Worlds for her. I'm afraid that was a false start. Well, it didn't go red, did it? It also doesn't give us a reaction time. It doesn't time, give us an so RT, so that's not looking good. All right, again, they will take a look at that once more. It looks like he, he did the, she did the same as we saw about Vincent's buff earlier, where yeah. she just was anticipating it too much and couldn't hold the tension in the yeah. legs. And unfortunately, that means this Chinese team is out of the well, medals. It's, it's saying that Vincent started two tenths early. She started 55, half a second early. So again, the lights were still coming back towards her. So that's a severe penalty, and that will plunge them down the order. Yeah, she's putting together a nice run, and it looks like she has quite some speed in the sled as well, but it yeah. just doesn't matter anymore because of that penalty, unfortunately. Yeah, real shame. Looking very nice to the 12-14 transition as well. Yeah, good run. And pretty tidy across the line. Yes. 61-18. Unless that is reassessed during Yin Cheng's run, the World Championship bronze medalist ain't going to get much out of this. Well, it is still remaining as a full start, and the coach is clearly telling him, oh. And that's a real shame because that was a really nice looking sign. She's actually whacked her ankle on it the wall. It looks like there. it yeah, yeah, in yeah. the outrun, probably. Yeah. Hope she's okay. She or has some time to recover, luckily, but. Kicking away from one of the walls somewhere. Yes. So, Chow Dan, 61 1 8. The race is still on, and that's not the slowest run we've had in the women's field. Now, their chances of a medal are going to be long gone. However, again, this is vital training for the next time that they do it, and the next time, and the next time, until it's an Olympic discipline. Yes, at least Yin got away clean this run, so yeah. he has a chance of at least breaking some of that margin in time down, bringing it down. Well, he is up currently on the run of Axel Jung individually. Now he's just dropped back behind you by a few hundreds. He had a little skid from five to six, so it lost him a little bit of speed, but he's looking back on track here. Nice yeah. entry into nine. Now Doesn't the, have the speed, the only 15th best speed. Yeah, quarter of a second down on Axel Jung on the individual head-to-head -head run. And of course, that penalty means that they're over a second back now. And across the line. Our bronze medalist. It's a two minutes and 39 second run. He came down 59 2 1, so not enough to trouble Axel Jung. No, the Germans are safe at the top. Only three teams to go, and it is really tight in that top three, so there's a okay. wait and see if they can get in yeah. there. Here's Dan. Yeah, she clearly yeah. moves before that light turns green. Absolutely. Oh, she sinks into, I mean, that again, you know, there's a good technique there. She sinks in and then she's off the line. It's kind of like Bob said, brake technique, actually. Sort of almost using the body weight to drive you away from the line. It's hard to time with this reaction start. Yeah, oh. really is. And she was definitely too early there. Well, no medal this time for Yin. And based on their performance, 
over the last couple of days. Not sure that Valentina Margaglio and Amadeo Banyas are going to repeat Valentina and Matias medal from 2020. She has a good reaction time and gets away with a good push time. It looks it's still in the green. Six tenths over Jack Yes, yeah. But she just did not look to have a handle on the track at any stage, really, in four heats. No, she does have the fastest push time so far. Yep. And it's up by six tenths right now. Maybe she's found the speed. Well, maybe so. And, you know, maybe it was what it looked like that without major errors, the speed was just disappearing from the sleds. But again, from what, 60 hundreds up to five tenths to the Chrysler, she'd be four tenths in front out of the Chrysler. She looks just uncomfortable in her sled. Oh, it's not even. Nine again. She is yeah. just not in control and not getting the lines right, unfortunately. No. 24 hundreds up. Now she's in the deficit. They're going to go behind. And they needed Valentina to beat Jacka. 60.66. Which is definitely better than she's done in the women's race individually. Yeah. But it's not yeah. enough to give them a lead going into the men of this pair. It's the fourth best run so far. And she definitely didn't have a top 10 run at any stage. She's quite battered actually I think after this weekend she's had another hit somewhere yeah the hit before nine didn't look particularly yeah. nice and the track is quite bumpy after the bobsled races today yeah all right Amadeo Banis then this will not be a world championships to remember for their coach Billy Schneider the Italians misfiring quite badly he's okay. going back to the athletic start that yeah. we saw earlier from I think Mystique yeah there's been a few of them three or four and that, I, I do think that's going to end up being the way forward. It does need some practice to get yep. the exact right starting point, but at this point, 700s behind, so he does have a good getaway yep. compared to Axel Jung. Yeah, he's ahead but of only the so six far. speed going into Corf 2, though. And a big skit from 2 to 3. He's only got 800s in hand over Axel Jung, so he needs to really turn on the taps down the bottom of the track. He was closer to front-running pace in the men's race than Valentina. But the gap is continuing to grow. First to second is only 1500s. To First down. to third is only 2400s. They're going to drop to fourth. 2400s back at the Americans. Oh, I don't think they're going to no. be on the podium. No, they're not. And we've still got two sleds to go. And then fourth currently. Well, <laughs> that means that Jacka and Axel are in the medals. They're guaranteed a medal for this event, which color will Absolutely. We will see in a little bit. Two teams to go. Yes. Well, the Italians, 3,300s back. It is still Germany, Great Britain, USA. Two to go. Yeah, and we'll, one of the British teams will also get a medal at That's this point because their second very team is the British point. team. Yeah. Yep. Well, Look Banyas at that getaway. Again, exploded off the start, didn't he? Yes. But then had some little mistakes down the track and unfortunately couldn't match Jung's time. Yeah. The speed has just not been in the sleds. All right. Well, Amadeo Banis, our silver medalist, last year in the individual has gone. What about Tabby Sturker? What a world she has been having. Her first world championships. This young slider, just 23. In fact, she made a debut last year in Samaritz, so it's her second Worlds. I gotta say, she improved her reaction time quite a bit because I remember talking to her in St. Moritz where she had a 42 second <laughs> of 100 well, start. Well, that's because she had to put a cup of tea down politely <laughs> and leave. <laughs> yeah, it was her first time ever doing this, so this yeah. is a big improvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's ahead of Jacka, of course, because she has a better push. Yep. 4700s in the bank. So and again, a nice run. in all the women's heats, as we saw the media Coltman, the British sleds and athletes were building speed all the way down the track. They little nudge going from six into Chrysler. Bit of ice coming off the wall from 47. Seems to still be relaxed and in control. Yeah. Only 20 second speed though. Yeah. This could be close at the finish. It could be very close. And don't forget, she's racing 
World champion Jackie Pfeiffer on Jackie's home it's ice. Be very close at the finish. Red or green at the line. Oh, three hundreds. Wow. Matt had his work cut out for him. Yeah. Well, Matt Weston, the world champion last year, now has to beat Axel Jung for Great Britain to move into the lead with one to go. I mean, he did finish ahead of Axel in the individual yes, race. Yes, he did. But that's not a guarantee he can do it again, so yeah. it will be close all the way down the track. Very close all the way down the track. All right, this is for a medal. Matt Weston took the silver behind Christopher Groh here in the men's competition. Reaction time 0.14, not taking any chances. It's still a reasonably quick getaway. Axel Young. 100, ooh, big skip. Whoa. Still has the fastest speed out of everybody, though. Yep. Axel had a much quicker reaction time, 0.06 to 0.14 of Matt, and this is going to be head to head, nose to tail, all the way down the track. It's going to be hard to tell which way this is going to go. 200s, what yep. will be into Chrysler? Still 200s. Oh, this is going to be. Come really on close. now. This is crazy tight. It's looking like still a green. nice run. It's still in the green. Still 700, green. he's pulling away so he has the best speed. Clean. What was the 109? Clean out of nine, high at 11, still tight. Come on, look at Tabby. Look at Tabby. Look she at Tabby. Oh my goodness, it's, it's a medal. It's a whole tenth. 159, 21, they lead with one to go. Tabby Sturker and Matt Weston will be no worse than silver medalist. She can't <laughs> wait for him to get his helmet off. Come on, hurry up! Oh, <laughs> look at those moves! Oh, yes! <laughs> They're so happy. Oh. They guaranteed a silver medal, but yeah. the German, last German team that has to go has to put down two really good runs because both yeah. them and Jacka and Jung put down really nice yes, runs. Yes, they did. Now then, last year, Matt Weston, pictured, and Laura Dees, back home expecting her first baby, took a silver medal in San Maritz. This year, Matt Weston, to your right, and Tabby Sturker, to your left, lead with one to go. Just a couple of Olympic champions. I was going to say. That's all. <laughs> you took it right out of my mouth there. Just a couple of Olympic champions. And they are a bit rankled because they were beaten last week by the Czech Republic. All right, here we go. What's the RT? What's the, what's the bad wow. start at all? 0 0.09. All right, that's 200s in the bank over Tabby Stoker as she starts to run. But right. Stoker really starts to sled. However, Hannah Neiser really knows how to here. drive there. Yeah, you know, I mean, it is her home track. It is a home track. Has been really good at driving all season so yeah. this is a half second but well tabby only out started her by about a tenth in the first heat in fact exactly a tenth in the first heat of the women's race but it's yeah already coming okay. down to 4400 has a clean end Stop the the tabby didn't yeah there's a lot of ice left only 2400 yeah. behind she has the fifth best speed of the whole field at men's and women yeah. together she can nice make, line. She can easily make half a second down. Tenth back. She's going to be back, in the lead at the line. It's, it's going to come down to the. Uh, Three oh my goodness! Oh. oh my goodness! Which means Jacka still has the fastest downtime of this heat, I believe. Yeah, 60.44. All right. Now then, the gold medal and we're winding the clock back a day here, yep. is between Matt Weston, silver medalist, and Christopher Grothair, gold medalist. And Chris set a new track record in the second heat on Thursday, just to break the opposition. He felt very comfortable and he was very fast. This is for gold. Didn't over-anticipate it. 
All right, that was a conservative start, but only 100 slower than Matt Weston. This is about Christopher Grothair again beating Matt Weston in a fifth trip down the track. He has the best speed going into one. That's, He's only 1500s. Yeah. This is going to be close all the way down, just we saw the yeah. run before. He's already brought it down to 11 at this point. Yeah, he's so quiet up here. He does not give any speed away. No, his he's, lines are looking so great. It's only 100 his now. His form is beautiful. He's going to have the lead out of the Chrysler. I believe so. Yeah, the FES sleds are really flying here. And this is Christopher Grothair racing away he is to a second World Championship gold medal in 24 hours. Yeah, it's going to be. Just gets it down. Yeah. He'll look at Hannah Neiser in the leader's box. They're so nervous for their yeah. own teammates. And Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Wow. 12 hundreds ahead of the British team. It is so close, yeah. but that is a definite win for the Germans today. Absolutely. Well, last year it was Suzanne Kreyer and Christopher Grothair. This time it is Hannah Neiser and Christopher Grothair. The silver medal goes to Matt Weston and Tabby Sturker, and the bronze goes to our second German team, Jackie Pfeiffer and Axel Jung. They both get a medal out of this race. And actually, that is nice for them as well, especially for Jacka. I would say Hannah's probably pretty happy after yeah. being in the lead together with Halley and then falling back to third place yesterday in the individual race. She's yeah. probably very happy to take yeah. the, the gold medal here in this race. Christopher Grothair is absolutely on top form at the moment. <laughs> he looks like Superman with the flag around his, there his neck go. there. Well, there's a side-by-side -side of their respective starts. Grothair is starting strongly, and he just slides this track so beautifully. Olympic champion, three-time individual world champion, and that now is his third team gold. He won in Altenburg 21 with Tina Herman. He won in Samaritz last year with Suzanne Kreyer. He wins here in Winterberg with a third different sliding partner in Hannah Neiser. Anybody Great. that teams up with him just wins the gold. Yeah, well, yeah, the, uh, the Axel Junk gold medal streak is over, but he finishes with the bronze and uh, Great Britain's second team in fourth place. And that's a really good effort from Amelia Coltman and Marcus Wyatt as well. Fifth place for the USA, great stuff from them. And our Italians in sixth spot. That was Valentina Margali and Amadeo Banias finding something there. A couple of penalties for Austria and for Switzerland. Vincent Buff and uh, for... The uh, Chinese. Which the Swiss it was? Uh, Alexander Schlinder, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but there is your podium. <laughs> Matt Weston's mum and dad in the crowd again. Happy as Sam boys. Another medal for the boy. And Tabby Sturker, silver medal, world championship. What a great race. And it's always good fun and delighted to have the fun added to by Kimberly Ross. Thank you so much for coming in and uh, enjoying the race with us. Thank you for having me. Been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. And that brings the Skeleton Worlds to a conclusion. Next time we see these athletes on ice, it will be in the season finale in Lake Placid in the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York. Till then, from Kimberly Boss, Martin Haven, the IBSF TV crew, bye for now. Das war auf Grün, ich schwöre.